Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. My name is Bob Carwin. I am the former Trop Rock Music Association Entertainer of the Year for 2016, and I am a chicken wing aficionado fan of the show. So excited to be here. Nice to meet you. Before we get started, how would you gauge your level of comfort around spicy food? You know, I like spicy food. Um, in fact, in fact, there was a time when I actually was the spokesman for an international hot sauce company. I'm looking back on that now thinking I might regret that. Well, if there's one thing I enjoy more than Jimmy Parrish's music, it's Jimmy Parrish's Island Mojo hot sauce. But yeah, I use, uh, I use hot sauce and spicy food on a regular basis, so I'm excited. All right, so let's uh, get started with the classic. The classic, how can you go wrong with the classic, right? It's good. I can see the peppers in there. You've done a good job here, Sean. That uh, absolutely sets me up for the rest of the gauntlet. So from building out a custom pizza oven to an immersion <laughs> circulator for sous vide cooking, it's clear that you have an obvious affinity for food. What's the best home cooking lesson that you've ever learned about making pizza at home? The hardest part about making pizza at home is getting the oven hot enough. So, you know, if you go to a commercial kitchen, a restaurant, whatever, the, the kitchen, they have a pizza oven there. It's called a pizza oven because it gets to 800, 900, thousand some places are like 1200 degrees if you go to a professional kitchen pizza oven it takes like a minute and a half to cook the pizza so that's the best thing what you can do is uh, just crank your crank your oven up as high as it gets and just leave it there that's what I can tell you more power to you Oh, that's good. Strawberries and coconut. I like it. Is doing stage shows still the best way for a singer-songwriter to build experience and get discovered, or is that path to success more or less given way to the internet? It's a really good question, but before I answer it, a uh, question for you. Did you just change your clothes between questions? How do you do that? That's why you're the master of interviewing. Uh, no, stage shows are absolutely 100% the, uh, the best way for any singer-songwriter to get out there. It doesn't matter what you do from a recording standpoint. If you haven't been on the stage and have people throw stuff at you, I don't care how good you are, they're gonna throw stuff at you. And until you learn how to deal with the hecklers and the, the drunks and the people who aren't listening and learn how to grab their attention and bring it back to you, and, and make them listen to your song because they're not there for you. They're there for them to have fun. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Stage shows are where it's at. And that's where you play the songs over and over and over and perfect them just like a stand-up comic does. And uh, that's what makes them good. Here we go. <laughs> Got a little more. <laughs> Got a little more on that one than the others. But it's good. Two bites. Oh. Oh, that one. That one's got a little sting on the way down. Hops! Oh! Oh, Hops. Los Calientes here in the four spot. Los Calientes. Here I am for you. Oh. <laughs> That's <coughs> Yeah, so I've noticed so far that these ones are very, very nice on the bite. And it's like swallowing a scorpion and the last thing you get is the tail that stings you right in the throat. So yeah, uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a glass of water right here. Oh, Los Calientes, you got me. What would you say is the number one guaranteed to get the dance floor jumping wedding anthem of all time? Any show I've ever done, I always tell my friends, you'll know I'm in trouble when I think I've lost the crowd entirely when I bust into one of two songs, Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash or Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison. And if either of those songs comes on, either by me or DJ or band or whoever, those are the two songs that are guaranteed. You gotta pick your audience. I mean, it's not all Brown Eyed Girl or all Ring of Fire. It depends where you are in the country, but that's the reality of it. You can pick one of those two songs and it jams entirely. All right, what's, what's our pepper in this one? The number one ingredient is fire roasted bell pepper. So I, I fear you not, hotheads. Mm. Hotheads does not fear me either. Now this one kicks, oh, this one kicks you right in the mouth right in the beginning. I'm gonna, I should look, what I should do. So I heard Dolly Parton has this thing where she likes Snickers bars, but she doesn't want to eat them because she gains weight. So she takes Snickers bars and chews them up and spits them out. I feel like that's what I should be doing with this. Oh my. <laughs> I think it's time to dip into the secret ingredient. Oh, that did not help at all. <laughs> it's gonna make me care less eventually. But as far as calming the fire, no, that did not help. All right, Bob, so we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. Yeah, most of the things on my Instagram absolutely need more context. Uh, so this one is the way I feel like I'm going to be after this gauntlet. My mouth is kind of on fire right now, but actually this was uh, a sleep study that I did. I went to a lab, I did a sleep study. So anybody who snores, the doctors all send you for a sleep study and they hook you up to all kinds of wires and they measure your eye REM movement and your brain function and your, your breathing and all this other stuff. And then at the end of it, they tell you, you need a CPAP machine. Now you don't need to go through the sleep study for them to tell you that. They already know that in advance, but you go through all the ridiculousness and it's, uh, it's absolutely hilarious. So now, yes, I am the proud owner of a CPAP machine. I used to snore so thickly that when I woke up the next day, I'd have to tighten all the furniture because it was just rattling so much. But hey, so far so good. I'm on, I'm on like day five of it, and uh, I, I I sleep on a breathing machine now. <laughs> what else you got? Oh, this one, yeah. So we're doing some construction on the house, and we're doing some remodeling downstairs. And they had it, they were cutting some holes in drywall and things like that. And they put up the plastic everywhere. I walked in one day and I thought it looked like a kill room. And I wondered, uh, trying to run back in my mind what I had said to my wife uh, in the previous couple of days for her to redecorate the house like that. But it turns out it was just a construction project. So I felt a little bit, a little bit like Dexter when I walked in and saw it. And uh, I couldn't, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to have a picture of my own kill room. You have done your research, my man. Um, yeah, so when I was in college, <laughs> when I was in college, I went to Disney World, Disney World, yeah, Disney World in Orlando with a buddy of mine for spring break. And this was a picture, I think that's Epcot Center. Uh, it's Disney World or Epcot, I think it's Epcot Center. We spent most of the time there. And yeah, those were the shorts you wore in 1988, go figure. Um, I'd probably have to sew six of those together now to put them on, but those are the shorts that I wore for that trip to Florida. Forget that. I'm not even going to go into the hat and the tie-dye t-shirt. I'm going to focus on the shorts and the boat shoes because uh, high fashion. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Are you ready to move on to the next? Yeah, I'm ready, uh, ready to move on to the next one. Um, all right, so we've got Senor Lechuga.
They kind of pile on each other. It's like a fumble. It's like a fumble at a football field where all the linemen are jumping on top of each other, trying to get the ball. But in this case, the ball is my tongue. <laughs> Whoo! That's um, Senor Lechuga. Well done. When you're looking at an album and seeing that track list, what is your internal math when deciding which one to introduce to fans first? The number four spot is the most important. <sighs> the number four spot is the most important on the record because the first one, you set the tone, right? That's the one where you're telling people, this is how this record sounds. And if it's a different sound for you, um, you wanna let them know right out of the gate. And then two and three kind of are uh, ones that you really enjoy. And then number four is the ballad. So you, you really jack it up. You go right out of the gate, you go, here's the tone. And you jack it up the energy. And then number four is when you hit them with the, the sweet song. And then you can go into the deep tracks from there. From there, it's just basically how you like it. And then you want whatever the most giant, ridiculous song that you have on the record to be the closer. On this one, ooh, on this one, we had a, a, a cover of Vahavala. Vahivala, they said, Kenny Loggins says it, but I say Vahivala. And uh, we did a gigantic uh, orchestral cover version of it. And it's it's ridiculous and over the top, but it had to be the closer. So that's kind of how you go down the line from there. Oh, um, I'm like, uh, seven of these in right now. Did you change your clothes again? Oh, that one's nice. Um, it says right on it, super hot peppers and bitter orange. I'll tell you what, truth in advertising does exist. What sorts of freedoms, an example of a freedom that you think you had making this record that maybe you wouldn't have had releasing it under a more traditional record label? If I was gonna go through traditional record, record label channels to get this one done, starting to sweat, to get this one done, uh, there would have been no record. Why? Because I'm 53 years old and no record label has ever said, I wanna make a record with you. So if I waited for <laughs> regular record label channels, they don't do it. That's the wonder of being able to do things with uh, mobile studios. <sighs> and bands and uh, hiring your own people. Because you can get records out there that the major labels say, ah, you're only gonna sell however many copies, it's not gonna be worth us to, to put a bunch of producers in on it. Well, find my need. I'll do it myself and I can make the record. So this one, I will say that uh, this is my ninth record. I've been stumbling and practicing and getting things right and getting things wrong over the years. <laughs> the words the words are becoming harder and harder to get out of my mouth. My tongue is swelling up as we speak. Um, over the years, uh, I've gotten, I think, better at it. This is the record that I've been trying to make for 20 years. So traditional record label channels, I don't think they would have given me eight check swings before I hit this home run. This next one is Da Bomb Beyond Insanity. After Da Bomb, I think it's like a little bit easier. Is it? <coughs> is it? Is it easier after Da Bomb? Why do you put it in that slot? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eighth slot. Um, it's easier. Okay, fine. Da Bomb. Here we go. You know. Uh, cheers, Sean. Cheers, Bob. When I see people on the show bite into this one, I think that they're leaning in and kidding. They are absolutely not. That is, that is a disgrace to humanity. What even is that? That is not food. 
that is not something that should be fit for human consumption. Oh, I'm doing the eye thing. Uh, I'm gonna do it. Oh. That right there, that right there should not happen to a person. I feel like I've been a pretty good person in my life. And uh, I feel like I've done good things for people. That is not the reward that I was expecting. So this next one is Hellfire's Cranked. <laughs> oh. Oh, dear goodness. My nose is running. <coughs> so this right here uh, is not an enjoyable food, but it is, it is tasty. I mean, if you're looking for something super hot, I can see using it in a soup or some sort of dish. I took a second bite. That wasn't smart. Hellfire cranked, you got me. Sean, I'm gonna try something I have not seen any guest on your show try. A lot of remedies have been on. Gordon Ramsay had all kinds of remedies. I have not seen anybody try to fight fire with fire. So I'm gonna try to fight hellfire with fire. I've brought uh, banana peppers. Uh, pepperoncinis rather. Uh, pepperoncinis cut into slices. I'm gonna see if adding heat to heat will reduce it like a controlled burn. Let's try it. I immediately regret that decision. That was not a good idea at all. Uh, I do not recommend anybody ever doing that. Oh. Woo. What is your Mount Rushmore of cereals? Like your top four cereals of all time? <laughs> Oh dear God, I can't even imagine eating cereal right now. Um, my favorite cereals, Raisin Nut Bran. It is a um, a not very well-known cereal. Oh. I think that's number one on my list and I can't always find it. I don't always have it in the store. That's right up there. Um, I like, I like uh, Wheat checks. Go figure that. Uh, Lucky Charms, Lucky Charms, uh, fantastic of the sweet cereals. And uh, if I'm gonna go with the last one, I'm the only person who's gonna admit this. Original Grape Nuts, the little gravelly curdle things, I love them. I don't know why. I think I love them because people look at me like I'm crazy for liking them. Traditioner out here to put a little extra on the last one. It's time for the last dab. I know I don't have to, I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, oh, that was too much. That's all right. The last dab. Said it before, I'll say it again. Cheers, Sean. Cheers, Bob. I'm gonna sleep with a roll of toilet paper. Oh, that's insane. Yeah, that's not something that a human being should do to themselves on purpose. We've reached the finish line of our spicy meal together, and you're a man of many hidden talents, so we're hoping right here you'll be generous <coughs> enough to show off another one of those hidden talents. And we're hoping if you would be so kind, give us a musical expression of how you're feeling right now with your mouth and tongue ablaze. Yeah, oh. Uh, so I brought with me my trusty kazoo. I mentioned earlier that the party starter uh, was Ring of Fire. Oh. There it is. 
Absolutely beautiful. Closing it out, and now, my friend, there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. So uh, a lot of stuff going on. We got the release of the album, The Miles Between. Uh, we got shows coming up all summer. Fins to the West at the Casablanca Resort in Mesquite, Nevada. Uh, please go ahead and register for that event there. Uh, what else we got coming up this summer? Doesn't even matter. I can't even think right now. My head is a blur. My eyes are a blur. And you, my friend, are a blur. All I can see is the outline of uh, the devil. So congratulations on bringing me down to my knees. Thank you, Bob.